Hello everyone, passionate Piscator friends. Steve, a passionate Piscator here, and you may ask yourself, what on earth am I doing in the centre of Basingstoke of all places? No fishing rod, but a little net. Well, <clears throat> I always figure fishing isn't always about using your rod and line and tackle. Sometimes it's about getting back to, well, where you were as a kid and get your little dipping net and seeing what fish you can catch and other wildlife for that matter um, from rivers and ponds and streams and really getting back to nature. Today I'm back in my hometown of Basingstoke in East Drop Park. They have some boating lakes here which have an, an amazing fish, just an absolutely amazing fish, one I absolutely adore and they go to some fair sizes so hopefully I better get one. So let's see what fish I'm on about, hopefully, with this little net. Oh, it's me. This little stream here is actually the beginning of the River Loddon, famous as it gets a bit deeper for its barbel fishing and its chub. But here it's just a little teeny tiny stream. This is actually Basingstoke the very beginning of the River Loddon, the source. This is where it starts and it travels all the way to the River Thames. But what a nice place to start. This behind me is one of the East Drop boating lakes and where I'm going to start trying to net this little fish. Um, as a kid I used to come down here all the time <clears throat> and catch this little species of fish, this little mini species. Um, back then I didn't really know what I was doing, I ended up walking them all home and trying to keep them in a wheelbarrow full of water, uh, <laughs> which didn't go too well for the fish, poor things. But that's how you know, that's how you are as kids, you come down and get a few fish and you think oh yeah I better keep that at home in a wheelbarrow of course I will uh, but there won't be food and oxygen the wheelbarrow will be a perfect place they won't worry about all the rust of the wheelbarrow but they are a pretty hardy fish but they, but they couldn't they couldn't deal with that anyway I'm gonna have a little bit of a wander around with my net into this uh, boating lake it's actually one where they use pedalo boats um, and it's quite shallow uh, so hopefully, if I have a bit of a squish around, but the water is pretty murky, so I won't be able to see the fish I'm after. It's going to be more potluck. Hopefully I'll be able to nab one out to show you. It's also not very often. You see these bad boys, you'll see in a minute. Oh, they're probably as pale as anything. They haven't seen the sun in years. Anyway, telescopic the, the uh, net. I almost said rod then. Not a rod at all. Well, it's a rod of a net. Telescopic out the net, and we'll see what we can get. Literally the first swipe through and we're in. Look at them. Teeny tiny fry of stickleback. Fantastic. I'm going to get them into a little tub so we can get a better look at them. These are some of the smallest stickleback I have ever seen. Look at them buzzing around. Little stickleback fry. These are free spine sticklebacks and I absolutely love them. Any of you who watch my channel will know I love my mini species and you can't get much more mini than these little guys. Look at that little fella there. Absolutely fantastic. Look at him. Fantastic. Sticklebacks actually are a strange fish really. Uh, when they breed, they make a nest. The male makes a nest out of all this, uh, you can see about green weed there, they make that sticks and weed and all sorts of uh, um, vegetation. And they make a little nest to attract a female. The female then gets attracted, makes a little, uh, do I think this male's any good? Has he made a decent home for me? And if she um, thinks that he has, she'll uh, go in, lay some eggs and Bingo bango, the job is done, the male. But 
they then go on to protect the eggs and you know keep make sure they're oxygenated by fanning them they're quite um quite good parents but when they get to this sort of size they're left to uh, fend for themselves they've got to go out into the big wide world and hope they don't get eaten by the various ducks and uh, seagulls and things that are uh, around the lake here um, but it's really nice to know they're still here however these are little tiny specimens and there are some much bigger ones in there somewhere i'm hoping to put a net in to one of them fantastic there we go that's a much bigger stickleback this is actually a male fish there he is you can tell because of the colorations the red coloring they put that on during breeding season though breeding season has finished for these fish now sort of the end of summer I suppose he might be having a second, second brood but look at the amazing colour in that eye that blue blue eye and there's the stickles on his back you can, you can see them sort of just there they give them the name stickleback free spines that's about the only protection they have against uh, any predators that want, might want to eat them there he goes do you know what I might do? because it is me and you know me and my mini scales I might give him away and see how much he weighs why on earth not? you do it with a, a specimen sized fish to see how big he weighs so why not a fantastic little mini species like this in here we have the female probably not his female but a female a big female all these are little females there she is might give her away too. Beautiful, beautiful little fish. Give it away, give it away, give it away now. There we go, my little set of way scales. Let's have a smaller fish is, look. Pop them on there. What is that? 0 0.07 of a, was that a gram? Yeah, 0 0.07 of a gram. What an absolute monster. Let's pop in the right way round so you can actually see. Oh, what he looks like. I'm actually on a bench, a park bench. <laughs> There we are, look at that absolutely stunning fish. The blue coloration in his eye, the red on his gills, green on the back. Oh, I do get such joy out of these mini species. A lot of anglers don't even bother catching them. Can't imagine why. Yeah, as the female, she's actually a little bit bigger. 0.09. She also likes jumping off the uh, the scales. There we go. A bit less uh, colourful than the male, but no less fantastic. Look how beautiful she is. Beautiful, beautiful spots and patterns. Fantastic little fish. Completely overlooked. Oh, <laughs> hello. <laughs> you should always return your catch to where you caught it and keep them away from the ducks so they don't get eaten there we go back into the water you go and the babies too Wee! go 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 you can do it I don't want to go they're scared there you go lovely Of course, it wouldn't be an episode of the Passionate Piscator without something going wrong. Not that it's gone wrong, but the weather forecast said it was going to be overcast and no chance of rain. And it's raining, so I've just gone underneath some trees to keep out the way. So this is uh, the East Drop uh, Boating Lakes in Basingstoke. This is where I grew up. Well, actually, I grew up in Old Basing, a little village just outside of uh, Basingstoke, where it's not so little anymore. Um, they keep adding bits to it. Uh, but yeah, as I say, this is the source of the River Loddon, Basingstoke, just the other side of Basingstoke. It flows right through the centre here. And this was the area where the Basingstoke Canal used to come through. And where Festival Place Shopping Centre is now is the end. Uh, it used to go all the way from um, Basingstoke all the way, uh, well, it goes to the River Way, and then goes into the Thames and gives you a direct, or well, gave them a direct route to um, London. Of course, the canal in this area now is completely filled in and derelict 
Uh, you can still see some of the little sort of curves in the landscape where it, where it used to be, uh, but it doesn't really become the canal now until Odium. Well, there's a little bit before that, but I've always wanted actually to do a little um, little video doing the whole length of 37 miles of the Basingstoke Canal, uh, do a little sort of fishing history tour along it, um, in fact, which I'll probably do, oh, no, no, it's, it's a bit of an undertaking now, but when I lived in Basingstoke it might have been a bit easier. Remember, I don't drive, uh, so it's, it might be a bit tricky to get here and do the whole lot, and also to catch the fish, because the Basingstoke Canal is notoriously difficult. But anyway, I still love coming to here and doing a bit of netting, just like when I was a kid, um, to catch those beautiful stickleback, and it's nice to know they're all still here, although I have to be, be, be honest, they were a lot bigger back in the day, perhaps it's because I was smaller, but they were, they were a lot bigger back in the day. But um, what I'm going to do now, well, when the rain stops a little bit, is head to a little spot which I absolutely love to go netting for stickleback. These uh, boating lakes are, are all fair and good, but there is a beautiful, beautiful little spot where, in the old days anyway, there used to be some fantastic stickleback action. menu let's see what we got ah the stickleback that's the ones we've been after ah we got a little bullhead pinchy boy the alien from the alien films the blue avenger keith and ted the grumpy newt yeah. Hopefully this goes some way to explaining why I got my legs out. Ooh. Now it's not a warm day, it's a very cold one. But I am going into the River Loddon with my flip-flops on of course, because you never know if there's any broken glass in the bottom of here or anything like that. God, it's cold. And I'm going to have a little wade around in here, underneath this bridge as well, and see if I can find any interesting creatures that dwell within the watery depth. Oh, look at those horrible feet. Yuck. <laughs> hmm. closer look at that I think. Let's get it to the get it to the bank and have a quick peek, see what we've got. A lot of sticks and stones. We've got a little uh, right there. There's a little shell of a caddis. Caddis fly nymph. Caddis fly uh, lives a lot of its life underwater and um, has a little nymph uh, when it emerges into a, a in, into into the fly itself. When it's under the water, it makes a little home out of sticks and stones to live inside. This is a, looks like he's got a bit of a tube going on there. You can see a little hole he would live in. That is anyone home? Uh, actually, there is someone home, yeah. The caddis fly, I think you can see the little bit of shine there. That's him inside there. Living inside his shell. And they'll come out and be quite predatory and eat all sorts of things. Certainly, there he is. There he is, creeping about. Very nice protective home for him, a very nice uh, little shell. 
Let's pop him back in the water. go get him on the board there a river lodden stickleback and you can see the stickles on his back there pointing outlet lovely lovely fish people really need to take more time to appreciate every species of fish a lot of anglers get caught up in carp 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 fishing or maybe barb or catfish but I think to be a proper passionate piscator You've got to appreciate every single species of fish we have and the stickleback is certainly a fascinating one of them. Oh, he's gone a bit blurry now. There we are. Stickleback are actually related to seahorses and pipefish, believe it or not. Um, oh, blur, blur. Wonderful, wonderful fish. And there's nothing better than um, reliving your childhood by going down to a local pond or a river and netting one out, just like the old days. Fantastic, look at them. They actually have no scales at all. Uh, they have um, bony plates on the side of their body instead for protection, and of course those, sp those stickly spikes. And they're, despite being really small and you know very near the bottom of the food chain, they are quite a predatory fish. They will be eating all the shrimps and larva, living in the little um, blood worm and things, living in the bottom of a silt, in the bottom of this river, and in the bottom of ponds. What a fantastic fish. Why wouldn't you want to spend an hour out of your day down the river, down the ponds, catching these beautiful little fish? Look at the markings on them if you take the time. Mottled coloration. Beautiful. Thank you very much for joining me, the Passionate Piscator, in this little mini episode, which has been perfect for a mini species of fish like the stickleback. Um, give my channel a subscribe. It's not all mini species. It's not all me netting around for things. Um, I do use rod and line occasionally, but stickleback are just too small, and plus you're not allowed to fish with a rod and line and eavesdrop. drop. So netting it is, and it's lovely to get back into that sort of childhood world where you can go into the water and net around and keep stickle back in jam jars oh, I just love it makes me feel like I'm young again and not 39 years old <sighs> anyway thank you for watching give me a subscribe give me a like and I will see you again sometime in the wonderful world of nature wildlife fishing and well-being peace of mind <sighs> bye